who study generational trends uh, talk a lot about Gen Y nowadays. So we're going we're gonna to talk just a little bit about them, about who Generation Y is, but also the fact that they're not the only ones who are clamoring and pressing for mobile-based enterprises. We'll also uh, talk a little bit about demographics across wireless use and about the benefits and efficiencies of a mobile enabled enterprise. So that's the next five to ten minutes here. So uh, Generation Y, that's those, uh, let me just by raising hands, how many of you would be really uh, peeved if I asked you what generation you, uh, you were born in? Okay, a few people. How many of you would lie if I asked anyway? Okay, I'll go ahead. I will not ask. But uh, the Gen X is my generation. Uh, Gen Y, so anyone who looks old like me, you're probably Gen X. Um, the, uh, of course, we've got some baby boomers, but the new generation is Gen Y. And those are, they are those born between 82 and 2000. The oldest of them are now 29, if you do that math. There are about 78 million of them in the U.S. Uh, they're also called echo boomers because uh, there are a lot of them. They're the children of the baby boomer generation. And uh, about half of Generation X are now college or working age. Uh, they're also known as the millennial generation or millennials, uh, Generation Next, Next Generation, echo boomers, Generation MYTM. <laughs> I may have thrown that one in. Uh, USA Today says they're young, smart, rash, they may wear flip-flops to the office or listen to iPods at their desk. They want to work, but they don't want work to be their life. So, so I'd really like to join Gen Y. <laughs> sounds real fun to me. A few characteristics. Uh, you can go ahead and read the quotes yourselves, but uh, um, those who study such things say they're, uh, they have very high expectations. And maybe you see that among your students, maybe you see that among your, your younger employees. Uh, maybe you are one of those and you think, what? Um, they have kind of a blurred line between work and home. You may see them uh, updating Facebook at work, but they may also be doing work stuff at home. It's all, it's all just kind of the same thing to them, very connected. Uh, they tend to be tech savvy multitaskers. They will, uh, they're not distracted by doing multiple things at once. Uh, one of our developers who falls into this category, you can't believe how much stuff you can get done when you're working three IM conversations at the same time. It's really quite, quite fascinating. So that's Gen Y. But it's not just Gen Y that's mobile enabled. Uh, Pew Research, who did this study, looked at some of the changes in wireless internet use just over one year. So look up here, you'll find yourself in a few different places, probably. But uh, you'll see that um, there's uh, just a small gender gap, not, uh, not all that big. The age gap is significant if you just look at age. And another interesting thing here is that uh, race and ethnicity, uh, minorities, or traditional minorities in the US, uh, have a higher rate of mobile internet use than uh, than the white population. But here's where it gets interesting. With education, the uh, use goes up dramatically. So when you're looking at your workplaces in higher education, uh, particularly your employees, uh, internet use or wireless internet use is very, very high and it's climbing very quickly. You see up 10% just between 2009 and 2010. So, Wireless internet use is really high among the higher ed population according to these demographics. Also goes up based on household income. So you know, since uh, you know, all those higher salaries are you know, in the six figure range, that uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, that was a joke. Was a joke. <laughs> Maybe they are. Did change my work. So, so basically, the population that's using mobile internet devices is growing and it matches higher ed very closely. Uh, just one more shot there, you'll see that there is still a bit of a gap between the, the Gen Y and the rest of adults, but a very high percentage, close to 100% own a cell phone, uh, text messaging, very, very high. Internet access, send, receive email is still climbing. 
Okay, so the two advantages of a mobile-based enterprise, according to a, uh, to a survey taken in 2010, the average workday for mobile users is actually an hour longer than the 8.8 hour average. Adds up to about another six weeks per year. Now, this isn't trying to tell you to put your mobile phones away. Gosh, I shouldn't be giving free time. This is an opportunity to, uh, to get more efficiency out of the mobile-enabled workforce. I might want to just glance at some of these interesting statistics, including 6% admit they use their smartphones obsessively. Admit it. We don't know how many more wouldn't admit it. But 88% uh, but of mobile employees check their smartphones during their downtime. And that can really help if you're pushing through long approval processes in higher ed. If you can get some of those approvals done while they're commuting home or over dinner or over the weekend, uh, that can really move things along. And most mobile workers don't mind this. Uh, some of them see it as a detriment to their work-life balance to have mobile technology, but the majority of those who, uh, who had an opinion um, thought that it gave them better work-life balance. 